let's talk about bisphosphonates. We are saved by the suffix. The suffix for this medication is dronate, like alindronate, etadronate, and ibandronate. Let's look at the mechanism of action for this medication. Bisphosphonates slow the activity of osteoplasts. Let's look at what osteoblasts and osteoclasts do to the bone. Osteoblasts are cells that form new bone, while osteoclasts are cells that dissolve or remove the bone. You can remember this by the memory trick, osteoblasts think build new bone, and osteoclasts think clear old bone. So bisphosphonates slow the activity of osteoclasts, therefore slowing the activity of bone resorption. This is why they are also called bone resorption inhibitors. Let's look at why bisphosphonates are used. So we have osteoblasts and osteoclasts, and in a healthy adult, there is a balance between the two. But in osteoporosis, this is when the rate of bone resorption, osteoclasts, is greater than the rate of bone formation, osteoblasts. This leads to a decrease in total bone mass causing porous and spongy bones. They are also used to manage Paget's disease, which is a condition where the bones break down and regrow at a rapid rate due to the high osteoclast activity. When new bone regrows, they are weaker, leading to injury, pain, and fracture. Remember, bisphosphonates decrease osteoclast activity in these conditions ultimately slowing the process of breakdown and naturally slowing the rate of bone turnover. So in all these conditions, you can remember bisphosphonates think build bones. Okay, let's look at the most common side effects of this medication. GI upset is a very common side effect. This can include nausea, diarrhea, acid reflux, and abdominal discomfort. Another side effect is pill-induced esophagitis. This is where the medication causes damage and inflammation to the esophagus. You can remember this by the memory trick, bisphosphonates burn the esophagus. Let's look at some patient education. It's important to educate on how to decrease the risk for this pill-induced esophagitis. You want to educate your patient to take the medication with a full glass of water on an empty stomach. And they should stay upright for 30 minutes after taking the medication. We also want to educate on how to prevent osteoporosis. You want to encourage weight-bearing exercises to preserve bone mass. These are activities like squats, jogging, hiking, or tennis. Think about it. If you don't use it, you lose it. You also want to encourage them to increase their intake of calcium and vitamin D. The reason you pair vitamin D with calcium is because vitamin D helps calcium absorption in the body. Now for some nursing considerations. You want to monitor your patient's serum calcium levels. Hypocalcemia is a risk for patients taking bisphosphonates. As bone resorption slows, more calcium remains in the bone, leading to less in the bloodstream. A normal serum calcium level is 9 to 11, so be sure to monitor for levels less than 9, indicating hypocalcemia. Okay, a memory trick to help you remember the key points for bisphosphonates is just think of the Bs. These drugs help build bone. Remember, they burn the esophagus. This is called pill-induced esophagitis. And after taking the medication, the patient should sit with a straight back and against a back of a chair at 90 degrees. Let's review the most commonly tested on topics. These drugs are used to treat and prevent osteoporosis. We are saved by the suffix as they all end in a suffix dronate. And a well-known and major side effect is pill-induced esophagitis leading us to educate our patients to take a full glass of water and remaining upright for at least 30 minutes after taking the medication. That's all for bisphosphonates. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Happy studying, future nurses.